Hey guys, happy Saturday afternoon. Today I wanted to talk about some of the things, uh, rather some of the mistakes that you should avoid when you are hired as a specialist and working in a remote diverse setup like Solutions 8. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about remote because when you are working remotely, there is one big difference is that nobody is watching over your shoulders and therefore nobody pushing you for a deadline. Uh, nobody is checking your work for that matter and nobody is questioning you until things go horribly wrong. I was up until 4 in the morning um, because something happened. Um, there was a project where ad copy was not done properly and there were like too many people involved. Things changed, like ad copy changed hands from the specialist to the copywriter to the senior copywriter then to the client manager and it came back finally to me and when I sat down uh, everybody was on the call and I tried to get at the bottom of all this I realized that everyone <laughs> almost everyone repeated the same mistakes that I have been asking them not to repeat so here are some of the things uh, that I wanted to share with you um, to help you prepare for a setup like this so that you don't make these mistakes when you are actually on the job. I keep saying that finding a job is probably the easier part. Keeping this job and growing in a job like this is the most difficult part. So here are the, here are the things. Number one is that the, the number one mistake is that you should not try and push things to the very last minute. Because what happens is that if you leave things to the very last minute uh, and things not go as planned or the quality of the work that you have done uh, is not to the standards that that is required at, there is no time to go and you know revise things and everybody panics and the whole thing is kind of shattered to pieces. Um, so. When you, when you are assigned the work, please ask for a comfortable deadline. Assess the amount of work that you have and ask for a fair deadline that you can, you think you can deliver on. Not always you will have the luxury of everything going as planned, but then what's wrong in keeping a buffer for things going wrong, right? Um, so, and always like, Keep in mind, you should always keep in mind that if you are delivering some work, if you are doing some work, there might be some room for improvement, some room for correction, revision. So always account for that, right? Do not things, uh, do not uh, push things to the last minute. For example, uh, if you are writing ad copy or if you are setting up campaigns, we generally have like 10 days of build time for every new account that we uh, onboard. And, um, Often it happens that the things are delayed until the last minute and then we are all scrambling when things go wrong. Okay, number, number two is that you should never ever deliver half-baked work and assume that it's okay, chalta hai, no boss. Uh, you, you, you are um, you're working in a, a global setup you are rather working for the best Google Ads agency out there. We claim to be the best. And how can we be the best if you are doing your half-baked work? Like, like how, can, how can an airline claim to be uh, the best airline if the pilots are not flying the planes um, to the best of their ability? And when I say pilots, the Google Ads specialists, you are the pilots. You are the first line of defense. You are the one driving the driving the account towards the success or failure. Therefore, you should never ever leave or deliver half-baked work. Work that you are not proud of yourself. How can you assume somebody else to be proud of it? Or how can you assume this to work best if you're not proud of? And that brings me to my third point. The third point is that 
not asking for help when you are in doubt and when i say when you are when you are in doubt i mean that even if you are in 1% doubt like you are 99% sure that what you are doing is right but you are 1% unsure that it's probably not right and you're not seeking help see when you are working in a team the team's strength is as good as your individual strength so if you mess up the team has messed up does that mean that they were like the collective strength of the team was not good enough to tackle this probably not it only means that you didn't ask for help and therefore things did not like the quality of the work was not at the best of this team could deliver so when you are working in a team even though if it is a remote setup you have access to all the resources everybody and whenever you are in doubt like even 1% doubt always ask around seek help one of the beautiful things about uh, the culture at solution set is that nobody questions you for asking questions or seeking help it's the other way around actually when you seek help there are more than one person like, like everybody is trying to help you out and that's a beautiful culture it's not everywhere it's i mean i have worked for more than 15 years in uh, different uh, roles in different companies trust me it's out there one upmanship here it's not here it's about um, celebrating who is doing their best and helping um, someone who is not at their best but that can only happen if you go and ask so what i'm trying to say is that and it's applicable everywhere actually if you have this mindset that you will seek help when in doubt trust me the world is at your service everyone will try and help you you just have to ask uh, the next point is not following the standard operation operating procedures the SOPs if you ignore the SOPs you will make mistakes and you will leave things half-baked you will not do your best think about why the SOPs were defined in the first place they were defined uh, with the collective strength collective wisdom collective uh, experience and expertise of the entire team I mean there can be a case that you don't agree with the SOP and then therefore you should go and question the SOP help the SOP be improved but once the SOP is defined why not follow that SOP right it, it, it it's meant to help you so please follow the SOP and stick to it if you stick to it in 10 of the 10 cases, 100 of the 100 cases, you will do it right. And now that uh, the next point. Assuming that there is something that someone else's job, it's not. It's not. You are the specialist and therefore you have to take control of things. Uh, if you feel like, uh, oh yeah, so copywriting is, for example, not my job. The copywriters will do the copywriting for me they will write the ads for me and i will just um, plug it in the campaign and everything will be okay no boss it doesn't work like that if someone else did the keyword research someone else wrote the ad copy uh, and you are just managing the campaign dynamic search ads can do that better than you what is your what is your value add on the whole scheme of things please understand so everything once you are a google ads specialist everything about that account is your job it's your responsibility because you are the one responsible for the failure or success or success of the account so do not assume ever that um, this is someone else's job this is as much as your job uh, versus a shared resources job like a data analyst or a copywriter or a designer for that matter they are all there to help you save time but does that mean you should you should be uh, thinking that it's their job and therefore whatever they do is their responsibility and if things go wrong they will be questioned not you no i will come and question you 
right so um, take ownership that's the bottom line take ownership of the account and everything that is there uh, in that account and trust me if you take ownership like this or rather if you don't take ownership like this imagine if this was your business and it was your money on the line would you be able to afford the wastage probably not why should your clients afford this wastage or get the lower quality of work so please take ownership be proud try and be proud of your work no what's wrong in that uh, it's for your own benefit and um, I have the last point here actually the second last so I want to add a couple of more points the second last one is that doing things just the way you are asked to do so here at solution set I'll give you some context we have we have this revised structure where at the top there is a strategist uh, who has a team of four or five people uh, not four or five people actually seven eight to ten people and it it, it's comprised of client managers, the specialists and the junior specialists. And then there are support resources, uh, shared resources for support like copywriters are there, data analyst is there and there is this whole organization set up, right? Now for example, the role of the strategy is to define the strategy. The role of the client managers is to keep the client happy is clients happy their job is to basically be the advocates of the clients and like champion their interest and <clears throat> uh, make sure their their campaigns are successful their business is successful uh, from these campaigns but it all boils down to you who is doing the who is calling the shots who is actually executing those plans those strategies you as a specialist correct does that mean you should just be doing the way uh, what you are asked to do and not question it back? No, the answer is a resounding no. You you have to question it back, question it back because it's ultimately your work. It's your success or failure, correct? And how can you question you? How will you be able to question it back unless you are looking at more than one way of doing things? Right? If you think that, oh, um, I will just check the boxes, get things done and my job is done and therefore salary is coming in my uh, account, bank account, why should I care? Well, there is a very big reason why you should care. Because by just doing your job and not taking ownership and not questioning the status quo, you are actually just maintaining the status quo and then therefore you will remain where you are for a very long time and in a setup like this where I give the analogy of this being a Formula 1 track imagine the car the, the, the car driver who is driving at 40, 50 or 70, 80 at a fixed speed on a Formula 1 track what happens to that driver probably one race and that driver is out right or you will never win the race <laughs> so uh, when you are set, in a setup like this you have to try and run the fastest you can. The last point I have is you are not, you're not just trying to be the better version of yourself. Every day when you show up at work, you should try and see that what I did yesterday, is there a room for improvement? Like if I did a shopping campaign or performance max campaign for X client yesterday, is there a room for improvement on that one? Can I build the next account campaign in an improved way? Are there some learnings out of the money I have spent on this campaign or that campaign? Trust me, when you start looking for this, you will always find that there is massive room for improvement. And once you start look, taking this approach, it, it gets noticed really fast. And I will repeat one more time is that I'm really, really proud of the kind of culture we are building here where it's not about where you come from, what degrees of diploma you have, uh, how you look like or, um, you know, how impressive is your personality, basically. It's about 
your work is speaking for you. So if your work speaks for you and it's at the best quality, it will always shine and therefore you will get the reward for it. I have the best example of and I always keep giving this example of Onkar who joined as a trainee last year. He, I mean, today when I called him, he, he told me on the call that Santos, when I came, I did not even know what is DSA, Dynamic Search Ads. But the moment he came here uh, and he, he realized the kind of platform he had, he just pushed himself to the limit and he improved every day. Like other thing is that he was, he was not very good at um, English. Like, if he spoke two sentences, he will take three, five, six pauses. But today he is leading a team. He is a strategist. He is a leading of leading a team of client managers, the specialists and the junior specialists. And he is a great success story. And I am going to interview him tomorrow. Tomorrow we have scheduled a Zoom call where I will ask him about his journey, about his approach, and how he became what he is today, and what he is doing differently that other 24 are not doing probably and he's going to share with you all of that tomorrow so i will share that recording tomorrow but that's it for today i hope this video is helpful to you wait before you go i have a favor to ask you if you like this video if you found the content in this video helpful can you please hit the like button and if you have any question can you please ask a question uh, both of these things help the YouTube algorithm take this video to more people. And I am like doing my bit of karma. Can you please do yours and help this video reach more people? Trust me, just with a like uh, and comment, you can actually literally change someone's life. I have seen this happen over the last uh, 20 days that I have been making these videos for. And so I really, really appreciate if you can help me take this to more people. There are a lot of people out there who have, uh, who can use these videos to clarify their concept of Google Ads and be become a better Google Ads specialist. I am doing my bit, like I said, uh, it's time to do yours. Thank you so much.